with an FC TV with Chris Agata looking ahead to this Saturday's Emirates FA Cup match against Morecambe FC. Aggie, your thoughts ahead of this one? Uh, just look forward to it. Look forward to the challenge. Look forward to welcoming uh, League Two club to Woodside. Looking forward to a really decent turnout. Um, looking forward to the challenge of obviously playing a football league uh, club. Uh, looking forward to trying to build on decent form and trying to make it another win. It's got all the prospects of a, a proper Emirates FA Cup mm -hmm. tie, right? With Obviously, Worthing now, you've picked up a bit of form yourselves and, and taken on a Morecambe side that are struggling in League Two. There's a, probably a real feeling that you can cause an upset this weekend. Uh, yeah, I mean, we go into the game with nothing to lose, really. All the pressure's on them. Um, I try and sort of put myself in their, their shoes. They're obviously travelling a long way, playing on 3G, playing against a team in form, and then themselves aren't in the best space. So, if you think of all the... The ingredients you wouldn't want as a manager or as a high level team going into this game. Um, you know, they're you know, they're all there. So um, I think obviously there's, there's like I said, there's no pressure on us, uh, all the pressure's on them. So we've got uh, everything to gain really and nothing to lose to be honest. And looking at that form, as you've mentioned, obviously yeah. off the back of two wins in the National League South now with a four three win against Slough and then followed that up in midweek. There's a real feeling of confidence among, amongst the squad and that performances are improving as well. Yeah, yeah, well, we're um, two points off top, which is good. Um, um, obviously in the playoffs, which is which is great, and yeah, no, I've been six wins out of the last seven, so it's been it's been positive. But the biggest positive, as you alluded to, is the performances are getting better. Like we're um, we're playing some good stuff. Uh, not so much against Bath on Tuesday night; that was a different type of win. But like we said on Tuesday, the challenge is when you're not slick as you'd like to be and at your best and you've got a few tired legs out there you need um, you need to find a way to win the game now, whether that's with the players on the pitch or like we saw the other night substitutions making big impact so you know all in all it's just uh, yeah, I feel like we're in a good place and just excited with where we're at but most excited is that we know that we're only getting better so yeah, it's, it's good Looking at the squad available this Saturday, obviously we've had conf uh, confirmation now that Mo Farr is missing through yeah. suspension after his red card against Slough last weekend. Um, what are your plans in terms of replacing him on Saturday? Uh, well, we've got plenty of options. Um, it's, and he's not, you know, replacing Mo, it's not the only selection they have got a few, to be fair. Because um, obviously we shuffled the pack a little bit on Tuesday night with Glenn being suspended and, and Wads coming in. Um, Alfie come back into the side. Oli Black rested to it, you know, and the players that come into the side played really well. So there's a few selection dilemmas, but um, good ones though. Like it's not through a lack of options; it's the other end of the spectrum. So in terms of replacing Mo, um, we've got a few ideas. Obviously, the obvious ones are Temi or uh, Harrison, who are both playing very well, come on in the week and were excellent. Um, and then we've also got a couple of different types of ideas that, um, you know, looking at Morecambe, we think could cause some problems as well. So there's a few uh, options, which is, uh, yeah, we're in a good place. And just a quick word on a, another member of your squad. that news came out today about um, Taylor Seymour, who's obviously suffered a, an ACL injury that will yeah. probably keep him sidelined for a long, long time. Uh, just a quick word on him, because obviously it's come in off the back of a really difficult summer. Um, yeah, yeah just, just a word on him. Yeah, he's been he's been amazing since he's come in, and, and uh, you know we're, we're gutted for him um, because he's a brilliant character, he's brilliant for the group, and most importantly, he's a very 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 good goalkeeper. Um, and he was you know, the timing of it wasn't the best at all because, as I said, Taylor was really developing um, in, a, in a positive way. Like some of the things that we said he needed to work on, he was making big strides in that department, and uh, I think he was pushing Hagee and then for him to get. Uh, that injury and that type of injury is a real kick in the, uh, yeah, yeah, for want of a better phrase, kicking the nuts in it. So, um, but you know, he's he's a fantastic character, and you know, the the group have been brilliant with him, and, and the club will, will look after him and, and make sure he's, um, you know, he's he's given the best support possible. Really, um, you know, the big thing for us is to we need to keep Taylor around the group, and because he's such a, such a huge influence in the changing room. I mean, he's one of the best characters I've ever met in football, so he's brilliant. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll do everything we can to look after him and hopefully get him back to a place where he can 
where he can um, play at Woodside in a Worthing shirt. Thanks, Haggy. Cheers, Joe. Uh, I think um, Jack's already asked this, who might take Mo's place, but is it all tuning? You're chewing it all over. Yeah, definitely. Play. Definitely, it's not. Um, it's definitely not set in stone. No, we've got a few options, um, but fortunately, we've obviously scored a lot of goals this year. So, uh, and they haven't all come from Mo. So, it's uh, you know, we've got plenty of options. There. Any injury worries at all from any, apart from a, the goal, the reserve well, goalkeeper? Uh, uh, Cam Tut's still out injured, um, but other than that, uh, no, we're all right. I mean, Danny Cashman got uh, sorted a few times at Bath on Tuesday night, but he's all right. How many players can you choose from then? Is it as many as 20 or? Uh, yeah, we've got 20 plus right. players that, okay. that are available to pick from. We've got, also got a couple of lads in the academy that I think have done very well. So we've obviously carrying a bigger squad and there's potential opportunities for those guys to come into the match day squad as well. So as a manager, do you regard this as the biggest game of your career so far? Um, or is there one blindingly obvious that I don't know about? No, no, to be honest, no, I, I haven't really thought about it like that. I mean, the, the, uh, as boring as it sounds, I looked at the Bath game and looked at this week and that was like the burning priority really with the league. And then as soon as the Bath game was out of the way, it was right Morecambe. So I, I think the, the big thing for us was to make sure we finished this week uh, in the playoff positions and sort of local to the top, which we've done. And then obviously if we can, we can back up with a win against Morecambe, then great. Being as a horse racing man I am, who likes to tip and predict, yeah. I've worked it out and Jack confirmed this, I'm right with this, that if the results go your way, win, lose or draw against Morecambe, if the other league games, and then on Tuesday, could conceivably be top of the league next Tuesday evening. Yeah, yeah. I know you don't count your chickens, but... Yeah, no, it's, it's, no, it's something that we set targets for. I mean, the, the group have got a target uh, amount of games to win between now and the new year uh, and we're we're ahead of schedule on that um, so yeah I, I mean it's it's just do you know what is frustrating is if we like we've, we've won six out of the last seven and the the, the best performance was the one game we lost against and that Torquay. was against Torquay. Torquay and that there's a feeling that if we got out of that game what we deserved which was three points we'd, we'd, we'd be sitting top now so that's a bit of frustration but like I said the you know, league's not one in October, November, so, um, but yeah, it's good that we're, we're up there or thereabouts. So when you were, when was it you were appointed in the summer, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. So if you would then said to you, they'd said to you, right, come beginning of November, you'll be lying fourth and you've got a first round FA Cup tie, you'd have taken that, wouldn't you? Yeah, it's been, a, especially with the turnaround and the, the um, cause there's a big sort of overhaul in the summer in terms of players, bigger than we would have liked. Um, we lost obviously a lot of goals, so uh, yeah, no, we definitely would have taken it. Um, but the thing is with me, I'm always, always want a little bit more, so um, the, the feeling is, is like we dropped points at Weymouth, St Albans, Torquay. Um, who, who is it who's top at the moment, um, help me? Weston. And West then you beat them yeah. first game of the season yeah, yeah. away. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, <laughs> it had to be away. Didn't that's, it? that's what I mean. So we, we've, we've um, you know, we've seen what top spot looks like right. at the minute, uh, and we think, uh, yeah, we're we're in a very good position, and we're we're sort of fully equipped to attack it. What could this do if you got a result on Saturday? What could it do for Worthing as a town, as an area? Oh, it's a brilliant opportunity. Isn't it? Like it's um, obviously touch wood. You know, if we did get a result, hopefully um, the, the national um, the TV companies might, rather than be attracted to Wrexham in America, it obviously it's more financial gain and stuff like that, um, to watching Wrexham. Uh, hopefully it could give us an opportunity to then divert their attention onto the club, which gives obviously the town and the club more exposure. So I just think we're in a really good place, obviously, with... George's documentary going out and bits and pieces like that. that we're in a, you know, there's a real positive light that's been shone on Worthing, and so hopefully we win Saturday, we get even more opportunities to do that. Hi, Craig. How are you doing? You right? Yeah, good. Okay. Yeah, all right. Thank you. Um, you were interested because of how your football philosophy aligned with the clubs. Yeah. Um, is joint up thinking now the most important attribute for football clubs to be successful? Oh, good question. Um, yeah, yeah, but I don't. I don't think it's overcomplicated though. I, I think it's all pretty common sense. I think if 
Um, you know, obviously the, the club has an expectation to play a certain way. So then it makes sense to try and find a manager or a head coach that plays that sort of way um, consistently as well. Um, and if they can be successful doing that, then great. So I think, uh, I think it certainly helps. And it's not so much when so you're winning games and stuff like that. It's more so when, like, we dropped a couple of points early doors and there's a few sections of supporters that thought it was the end of the world. Um, but then in reality, when the people at the sort of top end of the club can see what we're trying to do and the way that we want to play and that we're all on the same page, it does help get you through those difficult moments and makes the last sort of couple of weeks even even more enjoyable where everyone's on the same page and fighting for the same thing and sort of trying to move in the same direction. So, But I, I, again, I don't think it's... Yeah, I don't think it's anything groundbreaking. I think it's pretty common sense. But the problem is, like, it shouldn't really be called common sense because it's not very really common. So it's it's one of those things. Yeah. Okay. And um, I think besides Ben Cornelius, you've you've inherited the coaching team here as well. Yeah. Um, what have you learned from them, and what have they learned from you? Uh, you'd have to ask them what they've learned from me. Um, not a lot, probably. Um, no, they're. Uh, you know, obviously they've been around the football club, especially as has been around the club and, and has, has been played a key role in promotions as a player, obviously played a key role last year, getting the club to the playoff final and the amount of times that I've sort of asked them as a reference point, well how did you do this, how did you do that, like when they've obviously won seven games in a row, like what did that look like? Um, so yeah, so there's been loads of stuff in terms of Worthing and um, as far as Az is concerned and then and Dino's just obviously won the Premier League, he's played hundreds of games in the Football League and he's been a real sort of um, confidence boost as well because when when somebody like Dino who's worked with some top players and played with some you know, you know, top people and worked with top managers, um, when he's sort of giving you a bit of positive feedback, it's, it's great in terms of confidence but equally when certain things are getting challenged it, you know who better than to challenge it than someone with that experience where from a level where obviously one day you'd love to be at so um, in terms of as I said what I've taught them probably not a lot. And um, finally you said before that you drive off the pressure of a Saturday 3 o'clock kickoff. Yeah. Does the occasion this weekend bring more pressure? Same pressure? Or no I enjoy it. Yeah, I, like for me personally, like like I said earlier, there's, there's no pressure on work and uh, we've got everything to gain, nothing to lose. So uh, I felt more, I thought I felt more pressure away at Plymouth Parkway, where the shoe was on the other foot a little bit. Where if you win, you should win. If you don't, you're the cup upset. So um, no, I'm just going to the game, looking forward to the challenge really. Uh, and in terms of the pressure, like it's. There's a, there's a bit externally, but uh, sort of, there's a huge amount of pressure I put on myself, really. So, um, and that, you know, that nothing else really compares to that, to be honest. So, no, you just got to enjoy it. Like, that's, that's what makes you feel alive, doesn't it? Like, I've, I've been there in academy football where you could win 15 0, you could lose 15 0, and I'll be like, you know, it's, it's um, in the grand scheme of things, it's, it's not not huge, whereas obviously I quite like the fact that albeit we've only lost a couple of games this year, it does sometimes feel like the world's ended, but I think that's also one of the things that sort of motivates me to try and do better and move forwards and the players are the same as well, and I think it's a compliment as well because the expectations there, you'd rather that than win a couple, lose a couple, draw a couple and everyone just accepts it, it's, um, you know, I think it makes for a more exciting experience and ultimately like more of a winning environment.